Hey everybody, we are here for uh, a, a live event, an ng-conf live event. It's kind of our first one. Uh, this is gonna be exciting. So uh, we wanted to do an event right on. We when we kind of conceptualize this, we're like, hey, what if, what if there's things people could do today uh, to get ready for Angular Nine? Because I think there's a lot of us. I mean, Kim, how long have we all been waiting for Angular Nine? Like at least six months, right? But but the Ivy portion for years, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's been it's it's been <laughs> like a it's been kind of a crazy wait. Some people have been more patient or grace more graciously patient than others, and um, it's I mean it's it's almost here. And a lot of us are excited because we know hey, this is this is a big release. There's there's kind of a lot going on, and um, we we need to get ready for it. And so, Owen and I like a month ago, yeah, Owen ish. Yeah, about a month. Yeah. We said, hey, what if there? What if we made a list of things people could do today to get ready? So we know, I mean, and and knowing that Angular Night now is it's very close. Like, um, I know they release on Wednesdays, and they didn't release yesterday, so it, it could come out next Wednesday. It might come out the, the following Wednesday. If it, I doubt it will come out much later after that because the holidays. So if if it doesn't come out like next Wednesday, probably the New Year, I would guess. But 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 the point is, we're close, and we want we wanted to give people, hey. We digested the change log. We digested the release notes. And we 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 squinted at it. Cause because if you look at it with squinted eyes, you're like, all right, I see some things I could do today to get ready for it. Right. Yeah. And the, the cool part is, I mean, the Angular upgrade story just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, it, you know, there were more breaking changes. It, they definitely made a lot of uh effort to make this as painless as possible. And we'll be able to show some of that. Yeah. Um it's those little uh, little areas where there are some ca the cases where you may want to to take care of some things on your own before. So totally. So um, so yeah, that's what this event is about. This event is about um, making it so that you can get ready today. You don't wait for nine to get here and then you try and pull the trigger and everything. There's some things you can definitely be doing now. Um, before we kind of kick the tires on this thing, I'll just I'll just introduce everybody. My name is Aaron Frost. I I'm a, a Google developer expert with Angular. I I help with ng-conf. I run a, a, a an Angular consulting agency called Hero Devs, and um, that's that's kind of who I am. Uh, our our guest we have uh, Kim Maida. Kim, can you do like a solid intro? Yeah, so my name is Kim Maida. I'm a Google developer expert in Angular and web technologies, and I am the head of developer relations at an identity company, identity as a service company called Auth0. Cool. And I'm uh, basically here today uh, because I don't know much about this, actually. Like, there's been all of this hype, and I've been kind of holding back on getting too involved in it because of all of the sort of turn on when is Ivy actually going to be released. Um, so I'm basically here to to explore and learn about it now that we are actually on the cusp of it. So so that's gonna be exciting. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um so uh cool. And you're also here because I'm pretty sure everyone I mean I think you're awesome. I'm pretty sure everyone generally thinks you're awesome. So you're here to <laughs> to bring in uh, a, a solid community point of view on this stuff. Because Owen and I, we kind of jumped down the rabbit hole, and we might not be explaining our thoughts as well as we should. And um, that's one of the things you're fantastic at. And then uh, also other guest is we have – oh, so, so she's Kim Mide on Twitter. Everyone who's watching, if you're not already following Kim, you should go follow her. I learned a lot from following her tweets. Um, and I learned a lot of other people I should follow. She's, she's great at um, sharing really good, good content. So, all right. Uh, next we've got Owen. Go ahead and do a, an intro. Yeah, so my name's Owen Meekum. I'm a front-end solution architect. Um, I work mainly in the enterprise space on, on large Angular applications, been using Angular uh, since the Angular JS alpha days. Um, had the opportunity to help out with ng-conf uh, a little bit last year, and then uh, through that uh, was also ha had the opportunity to work with, with Aaron Frost at RxJS Live um, that we did last September. And uh, I'm, I'm a new member of the uh, organizing team for ng-conf and looking forward to making ng-conf an amazing conference once again and 
uh, just just helping out any way I can and, and getting to interact with the Angular community. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, um, Owen's been, I mean, for those of you who know how hard it is to find someone who will do 100% of the things that they, they use their words to say they'll do, that's hard. And Owen's one of those people who it's like, hey, Owen, can you do a thing? And if he says, yeah, it's going to happen. So Owen's, I'm a huge, huge fan of Owen. Uh, well, it's kind of you to say. Yeah. So um, before we, we we get going, we've got we've got we keep getting people streaming in. So I'm just gonna announce this next bit real quick. So next week, maybe next week, maybe the following week, whenever Angular Nine is finally out on on um, NPM as the latest version, the Angular team is gonna come on and do a live launch event with us, and we'll have Victor Safkin here from Narwhal, and um, hopefully we can have a couple other people from the community here. To really kind of go over, hey, this is how simple the ng update process is. But now here's some of the things you're going to need to do and check in your app to make sure that you're good to go. Because there is there are some things going on. And we're going to explain, hey, if you do the ng update and run into errors, here's how you're going to kind of walk through that. Here's some ways. So anyone watching, please um, grab that link, ngcnf.org slash ng9. That's going to be our ng9 release event. And you can go there, sign up because we don't know when NG9 is going to happen. The release is going to happen. That's where you'll go to get like emails about the official event with the Angular team and the ng-conf team. So, um, and if you could, anyone watching, please share that on Twitter. Just, we, we want to get a lot of people to kind of come and be a part of that live event. Ivy has been something that the community has been waiting for. I mean, be serious, Kim, best estimate. How long have we been waiting for Ivy? several releases i mean um at least 18 months right yeah like i would say almost two years right yes coming up on two ish maybe it's over the two I, it's, it's it's been a while we haven't waited this long for anything since angular 2 so it's it's been a wait right and so um so come be a part of that event it's gonna be fun um so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and do some screen share while you get that fired up, I'm gonna. I just want to acknowledge some of the questions that have come through that maybe we can get to today, and some may be best in our next event. But the uh, the first one um, that in, that you'll touch on, I'm sure, Aaron, is will ng update just work, or are there things that we need to to think about? And the answer is yes, and we'll show some of those um, areas where ng update does a lot for you. Yeah, but you still may need to to do some things to uh, keep your app working the way you want. So. Yeah. Appreciate that question out there. It, NG update will work. Today we're going to show you some things that will break though. And, and some things that are going to be different and you need to check in your app. So that's what we're going to show today. As far as what does NG update do? That's what our next event is about. It's about showing off the release, showing how easy it is, but then there's going to be things you need to check. And so that's a great question, Fergus. We'll, we'll cover more of that. We'll cover some of that in this event, some of it in the next event. Um, so yeah, what other questions did you see in here that you wanted to kind of? Um, um, once again, it's probably one for the next event, but just so that they know that we'll be prepping for it and a good reason to come back, like talking about the I-18N story, internationalization. Yeah. Um, we'd love to cover more about that. It's, it's nothing that we have in the uh, doc for today, um, but we can certainly have some good information for you at the next event and, yeah. and ask the, the folks on the Angular team about that. Yeah, so... Um, I choose to not take offense to this, uh, this comment. That is the poster of me, but uh, I'm not, I'm not doing the motivational speaker, even though it looks like I'm doing the Chris Vardy motivational speaker. I choose to not take offense to that Hugo. So, um, so yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, if you see any more of these questions, call them out to me so that we can, we can check them out. Um, but just so you know, Kim and, and Owen, I don't know if you're watching, lots of love for the two of you um, in these comments over here. So that's, that's awesome. Okay. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to, we're going to kind of go over these, um, these, uh, s these changes that are coming up. I'm going to share, which screen am I sharing? This screen. Okay. So um, one second, I need to come over here move this to my next desktop and then we'll we just okay. got the inception effect we had that that inception didn't we okay so for those of you who signed up on um on our list we emailed you out this cheat sheet 
this will help you um, walk through your project. And it's got, it's got most of the things that uh, we found that you could do today in your project to get ready for angular night. And so Kim, since you're like, Hey, what is this list you speak of? I, uh, we're going to explain this to our best. And if, if we're not explaining it well enough, you're, you're here to call BS on our explanation and make us clarify. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, cool. This is awesome. Um, so here we, we're going to, we're going to kind of kick it off. So if you want this, if you want this list um, of uh, this PDF, you can go ahead and head over to our site um, here. And I just put it in the YouTube comments, head over there. You can sign up. We'll email it to you. As soon as you sign up, it like yeah, auto emails to you. So, so head over there. It's good. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and kind of start. And we're, we're so we're just going to kind of go down this list. He, the, this is the short list of things that we know you can do today to kind of start getting ready uh, for angular nine. And then the full list of things that are changing. Cause there's more than that are on this list that, that are going to have to change, but, but a lot of them you can't do till nines here. So this list right here is us trying to show off the things everyone can do today to get ready. And I, we wanted to do this Owen because well, as we were talking, we're like, Hey, people could be the hero on their team. They could be like the, a the angular nine experts. If we get, if we helped get this list, cause this list wasn't fully easy to digest, but this is a list of things you could take to your team. Like, Oi, Oi, let's do this today and, and get us ready. So that's what, that's what, that's what this list is. So let's kind of, we're going to kind of go over these one by one and kick the tires on this thing and, and get it going. So the first one is this class template binding syntax fixes. Um, and so if you come down here and we've got this, I'm going to maybe zoom in a, a scotch real quick. One sec. Okay. So uh, one less. Okay, cool. So um, currently in Angular, if you, if you have a class binding using the attribute binder, these square braces, and you bind like the bold class onto this paragraph and you use this inline template syntax, to bind another value into the class attribute this way, those both work and you can use both of them. And in Angular JS, the old Angular one, if you did this, this kind of a binding, um, both bold and red would be, would be classes on that paragraph. But in Angular today, if you do this in Angular eight or below, you're only gonna get the second one. So if in, in this case, you'll only get red. If we switch the order, then you'll only get bold. And that's kind of wonky. And we have this stack blitz over here. Um, let's allow this. Sorry, it went to the wrong window. So we'll come over here. So um, if we switch the order here and I put this second, you'll see that the red will go away. Uh, yeah, put that there. And then the red goes away, but it's now bold. So like it, you're only getting one, right? Well, this is this is changed in Angular nine. In Angular nine, this is going to start working. So, if you have an app where you coded something like this, and let's say you did it on purpose and you noticed it was broken, which probably wasn't the case, it's more likely that you didn't notice it was broken. It's more likely you didn't notice you had two things, but only one was working. As soon as you install Angular 9, this is going to start working and your app is going to change without you noting, knowing that it changed. And it's not going to throw any errors when it changes. It's just, it's just going to start working the way that you initially, the way that at a glance it should work. So this is going to cause some changes in your app. So it's, 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 it's to a point where you may want to go through and search for anything that uses a class binding syntax like this and see if any of them also use um, like the inline template binding because that it's going to start working, which may have side effects you're not prepared to to accommodate in your UI. Does that make sense? I'll I'll, I'll speak for the crowd and I'll say that it does. Okay. The, um, uh, post post some uh, definitely uh, put some comments out if if it doesn't. Um, for me, I don't know what you what you think, Aaron, but. Um, 
for me, this would really show up in code maybe if as I'm getting started with Angular and I'm experimenting and trying to figure out how it works. Maybe I finally got it working and I and I didn't know why I got it working before. And so I have these, these two remnants because today you wouldn't, um, I don't think this will be a common thing um, in for an experienced developer to have in their code, but you may, this may be something that if you, you know, if you have old code in, in your legacy app that, that you may run into. So you may want to just take a peek for it. Totally. Totally. Kim, does this, is this hitting home as you're like, yeah, I could see how someone would have done this. Did we lose Kim? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, she's back. Let me add her back in. Sorry. Okay. Now she's back. Thanks. Sorry. I've been, I've been backstage for a while. Cause I tried to click login and apparently just kicked me out when I did. Oh, that. sorry. I was like, I'm wait, sorry. where's Kim? <laughs> no, you're okay. back now though. I am. I am back. All right. So does yeah, it make sense? This, this makes sense to me. It's, interesting to me i didn't know that they uh are we're going to fix this like owen said i agree that it probably won't affect a whole lot of people um yeah. but yeah. it's definitely good to know because it could cause some weird yeah. unexpected things if, if you're not aware i mean to, to to the point there's like 85 ways to add a class to an element in angular you yeah know? and so this is fixes one of them there's still you've got ng class You've got instead of class like this, you can say class.foo is equal to true, right? Um, like you've got a ton of different ways you can start binding things. And then you can also use at host binding inside of your components. Um, uh, so there's, there's, there's a ton of ways you can bind classes. They've only fixed really this kind of scenario with like the inline templating and the attribute binding like this. So at least that's what, that's, that's what we read. So that's something you can check out for. All right. So next thing is the module with providers. Okay. So module with providers, this, um, this object that you've been able to return for a while, you can return this, this object that has an ng module and a providers, uh, array. And this is what's known as a module with providers. It's an interface that you can, you can kind of declare as, um, as a property that you're going to, you're going to return in angular and, for you've been able, this has been around for a long time. This isn't new. And when, but when you, def, when you declared like a function that would return the module providers in the past, it didn't take a generic. You didn't have to define what the type of the ng module would be, but now going forward, you are going to have to define that. Now, as you do ng update, it will go ahead and it will, it has this schematic to start adding this for you. But we're calling this out because this is a change you could start making today. Start adding generics to your stuff so that um, so that when you run the update, you have the least amount of changes that are affected that, that happen as a result of the schematics from the update. So so again, this is something that, that they do have a schematic to account for, but um, but it is something you could start doing today to kind of take care of for it. Yeah, and uh, for me, if you know that you're, you know, maybe a couple of weeks out or months out, and you want to, you know, take advantage of that type safety now, um, you know, it's just something that you could you can use and leverage now without having to wait for that upgrade, and then it's just, you know, a non-issue when you run ng update. Yeah, and like I agree, this isn't a huge, um, this isn't a huge thing, but it is something you could start doing today, which is why we're we're trying to call. And a lot of these are not huge. There are things you can do today. There's, there's honestly, um, like on this point, the Vachenko's called out. I wanted to kind of point out something about Angular Nine, and Owen and Kim correct me um, if if I'm like off the res here. With a lot of releases of software, like a new version is like, what can you do for me today? Like it's all about give me the new features. Give me the new features as the programmer. And Angular 9 is a different kind of release. It's all it's all about we're going to do a massive change and we're going to do it without breaking you. So there's the, the goal here is to have the least amount of these things that we're talking about as possible. So um, when you're like, hey, man, this stuff's easy. It, like the fact that it's easy is actually a tribute. It, it's like a tribute to the amazing people working on Angular that they were able to do a massive heavy lifting effort under the hood and release it without making a ton of breaking changes for us. So um, while some of these may seem easy, that's almost like the, not the miracle, but like the genius behind Angular 9. So as you see, well, wow, that was easy. 
that's kind of the point. Like that's the compliment that the angular team is looking for is, well, that was easy. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so someone said, does this update break? Will this update break down all angular material components? Um, I'm not going to answer that question unless Kim or Owen would like to. Um, I just noted it as something that we did. We should definitely follow up on. Yeah. Um, we're not going to cover it today. Okay. Yeah. I would, uh, I would say, I would guess it doesn't break them. I mean, they're built by the same team and that's kind of what they're trying to do. Okay. So that's the NG module providers. Kim, any, any thoughts on that? Um, not on this specific, I do like the type safety and I like that we can add it now. Um, yeah. but I, I did have a, a, another add on to what you were saying before about sort of people look for the new features. What can it do for me? And then also have it, I started using angular and angular JS version 0 0.8. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I have all of these nightmares still about the pain and agony of updating mm -hmm. angular JS, even, um, for point releases, not, not even full version releases. And it, it was so painful and to, to this day, I appreciate so much how easy it is to upgrade yeah. Angular now. Yeah. Um, I, it's, you know, been a long time since Angular JS for me. And yeah. I, every time there's an update, I always still appreciate that. Yeah. So everybody's always on the lookout for new features. And then these days it's sort of become normal to look forward to new features. And also it comes with the assumption that you're not going to get broken by them. Yeah. And the amount of work that's just gone into Ivy doing this type of uh, the whole new renderer, um, yeah. that's a, a monumental change. And Massive. just the fact that they've done this in a way that allows us to not get broken. Yep. Like hats off to the team. Yeah, sure. seriously. I agree on that one. Um, hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. That's, that's, that's kind of the miracle of this angular night, not miracle, the genius of the angular nine release. So, um, okay. So with Angular 9, we'll go, let's go on to the next change. It's this testbed.inject function. So anyone who writes tests and like, I know most people listening are like, I don't write tests, next thing. But if you do, you're, you're used to using testbed.get. Now, recently testbed.get got the option to where you could pass a generic to it. In the past, get didn't have a generic like you didn't declare the generic when you called the dot get flag it was it, and now it's optional well in angular 9 um you're going to get this new api called uh they're going to deprecate the dot get call and then inject is going to be the new function that you will call it has the same signature as get though um and it the 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 generic is not is not optional on the the testbed.inject call and so if you wanted to get ready today for Angular 9 for like that, that deprecated API on all your testbed.get calls, you can start adding this generic to the call, right? So as you're as you're going through your code, you can uh, here, let me come on, come on, stack blitz. You're my friend. So as you go through your code, um, you could, you know, you're gonna want to do testbed.get and then you know app component that's that that's gonna that's gonna want to be how you're gonna want to call this going forward and so that's what's going to um sorry i wrote that wrong um that's gonna be how you're writing this going forward so if you wanted today to get ready for that inject call in your tests you can start by changing all your get calls to also include the generic as well because right now the generic is optional and it hasn't always been even optional like before it wasn't even required so that's one thing you can do today uh, did, did we have any people questioning or commenting about that? On I think there's even more comments just about um, we may have different philosophies on testing too, but the uh, I think there's questions about how important tests are or not. I'd be curious to see um, either on Twitter or just in the comments, um, uh, you know, how many tests uh, people have in their applications. Yeah, uh, I, I, we have uh, in one large app that we have, I think we have over 4,000 unit tests, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I'm with you. When you get to a big team, it, it's it's helpful, but it's also a lot of work to maintain those tests. So there's a trade off. Yeah. Tanya says testing's life, right? And then uh, Akin's like, "Hey, I I wrote a test once, right? 
Fergus is like, come on. Uh, Fergus brings up a point. He says, hey, I've, I've been using Angular 9 so far. And so far, the extra type checking has been painful. But um, we're about we're not going to go over the extra type checking. But honestly, the, the type checking, as it gets stronger, reduces the amount of tests I do have to write. And so I, I love the additional type checking that's happening. But we'll go, in, we'll go more into that in the, the next release. We'll talk about the type checking changes because the template type checking changes, because those are big and powerful and they'll change your apps. But, but for yeah. now, we're just, for now, again, we're just focusing on things you can do today. All right. Yeah. As, as, as a little tease, Fergus, you, we'll, we'll cover there's three ways you can iteratively add that so that it doesn't break you all up front and you can get those benefits over time. Totally. Yeah, we'll we'll tease that next time. Um, hello, where are we at? Okay, here we are. Some AP, some remove AD, APIs. So there's several. There's a lot of actual removed APIs. Um, and when you run ng update to update to nine, a lot of these are going to get taken care of for you automatically. An example of that is like um, the renderer API. That's going away in Angular nine, and so you need to be on renderer too. And so when you when you run update, it will take you. It, there's a schematic that will take you from render to render to, um, and uh, and yeah. So that's, but there's some that won't happen. And it's like one of them is the ng form. So before you could use the ng form as a as a, as an element without the dash on it, but that select that selector on it's going away. And if you go look at the documentation for ng form you'll see that there's three or four ways you can use ng form. Um, in fact, let's, let's pull it up real quick. So if I go to angular.io and we look for ng form, one second. So if we look at this directive, I can use ng form, ng dash form, or I can use it as an attribute ng form. So there's three ways to kind of select onto the ng form today, right? There's, and if, and, and when you go to, if I do the exact same thing, let's, let's see if this works. If I go to next.angular.io, uh, you'll notice that the, the ng form without the dash on the element selector is now gone. So in Angular 9, this ng form selector is out and you need to be on this one. So that's something you could do today to kind of start getting ready for Angular. For, for Angular 9 and not worry about the breaks going forward. I know that some of us don't have a lot of forms, so we're like, eh, cool, two seconds. But a lot of us have um, apps with tons of forms, and so it may take some more time for people like that. Uh, Kim, easy? Easy, and I really appreciate things like this. I appreciate consistency, and I think it makes it a lot easier for people coming into Angular and coming into existing code bases to see this type of consistency enforced. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think having an HTML tag with a capital in it is kind of wonky, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's wonky. Okay. Uh, we got Owen, are you are you watching the comments on the YouTubes cuz I'm not even not even Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, mainly taking notes. We're getting lots of lots of things that we will be covering in the next Okay. Um, you know, about the language service and stuff, but yep, we're watching. Yeah, okay, cool. Call me out if I need to. Yeah, and then the render will be replaced with render 2. Um, there is there is a note on that though, because um, while the ng update does take care of that for you, we we included the link to the docs on that for one one important reason, which is while it does take care of that for you, like in some instances, um, oh, what's the particular method? It might be like create component. Um, it it's slightly different in renderer too, and so what the ng update does, if you don't take care of this on yourself, is it will actually shim your files with these ng renderer um, x methods. Um, so it'll end up adding a little extra code where if you don't want to have that code added and you want to explicitly take care of this and, and avoid that, um, you should do that particular, um, well, maybe run ng update first and then go back and make the changes anywhere you find these methods, something yeah, like that. Yeah, the underscore underscore render yeah. ng renderer x. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you don't take care of this, you'll end up with some smattered extra uh, stuff in your code the, the underscore underscore energy render x stuff but it's just so that they don't break you so if you don't do this you're not going to break but um no one wants to see this kind of stuff in their code I, and I, I feel like i can generally speak for everybody when i say that so so yeah that's kind of where we're at on that and so yeah great thanks for calling it out it will migrate it and it will work 
but it won't work. It's not, it's not what you think it's, it's not just like a one for one crossover. So yeah, really good point. And then on top of all of this, there's just a ton of other things that have been removed. So, um, like the, I, I forget what the WTF stands for something, something function. I can't remember what that. I remember the first time I saw it, I laughed, but, um, these things are all going away and there's no replacement for them. So if you're injecting any of the WTF API into your, into your stuff, it, it will break. There's no replacement for that. So there's no migration for that. You need to get off of that. If you're, if you're using deprecated ITN, um, pipe module, like it's actually called deprecated. It's going away, but it, it's replaced with the other one, but there's inconsistencies in those APIs. So they're not a hundred percent. Like you can just walk from one to the other. So you're going to want to go through these missing APIs as well and make sure, Hey, I don't have any of the ones that don't have a replacement. Cause if you're using any of the ones without replacements, then you're potentially going to be in trouble. And then even the ones with replacements, you're going to want to take care of it just so that you don't end up with like smattered, underscore underscore nd render x stuff all over your all over your code so so yeah and if you want to go to the documentation inside this pdf we've got a link uh, that kind of talk walks you through all those apis as well so um so yeah one one of the de new deprecations that we'll cover next time that we're getting some some questions about in the in the comments aaron is the entry components yeah why they don't need them anymore yeah they're gone i i, I briefly i'll just say Ivy before Angular needed to know where top level components, which which components were top level components for dependency injection region stuff. It doesn't Ivy doesn't care anymore. Ivy can make a component out of any component. Any component can be a top level component. And so it's just not necessary anymore. And if anyone's doing Angular elements or anyone's doing ng upgrade, this is a big deal for you because we've got a ton of these entry components all over our app. And uh, it's going to be nice to get rid of that stuff. Now there's not, from what I saw, there's not a migration when you go to nine to remove the entry components, but I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm talking about next, next time stuff, right? Yep. All right. We'll definitely cover that and, and have some examples to look at. Yeah. 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 But if you want to go to the removals, um, there's that, there's a section of that on updating to version nine and you can kind of go through here and see all these same removals that we're talking about. We've, we've listed them in this PDF as well. And um, so, yeah. All right. Next, next ish uh, template only variable errors. So this is a thing that lazy people, and I'm saying lazy because I've done this a lot because I'm lazy. Um, if, if you have these template ver only variables, so you like this, if I have this button, I put this hashtag paragraph toggle on it. Right. So this this button is now the toggle for my paragraph up here. And when I click it, I'm going to put show is equal to true on side on this 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 P toggle template variable. Right. But but Kim or Owen, do you know what the type of P toggle is? Do you know what that type is when I make that a template variable? What is the type of that thing? Um, looks like we've got any at this point. Right. I have no well, idea. It's an element ref. Yeah. So element refs don't have show. So this is just me being a JavaScript duck puncher. Like I know I can just put show on anything I want. So when I click this show is now equal to true. And this paragraph will appear, right? You can do things like this in angular today without errors. And if you have code like this and I do, and other people might, when you go to nine, you're going to get errors. It's going to say, Oi, uh, you can't, you can't mutate a template very only variable. Like that's not okay. Frosty, what you're doing is not in the thing that you can do. Like stop doing that. And so when you go to upgrade at nine apps, going to start getting errors. So if you can go through your app and you can look for in any of your HTML and any of your templates, you can look for these, these template variables and be like, Hey, am I doing any of this stupid stuff that frost does? And if I am, I need to I need to refactor that out because it, unless I refactor it out, and you know nine comes, app's gonna break. So this is something you can start doing today to get ready for Angular Nine. And again, this is one of those things that it's just it's just like a highlight in the Angular Nine notes. 
hey, we now added error checking for if you try me to. And Owen and I squinted and we're like, hey, <laughs> if you're if you did this, your app's broken. And there's so there's another dimension of this too, um, where and they they call this example out specifically in the docs where if you're doing like um, and frankly, I should update the PDF with this example. Like in, in the ng4 let item of items, yeah, um, you might see code where you try to do two way um, data binding on item yeah. where you're trying to assign that, and that now breaks too. Before it just was non functional, but now it'll Let's actually, see. you know, you'll have errors. Hmm. Yeah. With that. Yeah. So this template only variable stuff, it does have, uh, it does have consequences, and everyone kind of needs to be aware of it did Kim, we get it? Did, you, did you see what tanya said about this about this one i, I laughed when when her comment came up about uh says uh omg this one gonna murder my apps who said this tanya hold on let me yeah, see it's further is. further up the list don't need entry components uh i don't see it it's uh yeah it's probably at the top of your screen but anyway gave me a good OMG, laugh. this one gonna murder my life yeah, yeah 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 um yeah i apologize uh it wasn't us but um is a thing that you got you gotta you gotta get on now because um it is gonna it is gonna bugger with your apps um so actually we don't i don't make a banner for that one i apologize all right so kim what do you think about this one part of me really likes it and part of me hates it okay. <laughs> i i can't i'm kind of torn on it just because it, it was one of those very javascripty things that mm -hmm. it was like oh and it's javascript so i can just do this mm -hmm. but i i definitely have an appreciation for um sort of reining that type of thing in especially as we're moving more towards like the javascript ecosystem is uh moving more towards typing and and sort of harnessing the madness i guess i would say uh i think the madness is is a reason that a lot of us both love and hate javascript so yeah. i i'm torn on this one i think it's the right choice yeah uh, on the part of the the platform um but you know sort of my my old yeah. school javascript heart hurts a little bit to see no it. any t any time that you're building a uh, framework or a platform let's just call it say platform or a library and from one release to the next you let's say you add api service people are like sweet new api service but when you take away api service that's when people are like oh my gosh some people just can't just can't and so and then and this is where you get the disgruntled and so taking away api always hurts but again i i think it's the right thing i agree with you 100 percent. i just think this one's a little tough because uh ng updates not going to be able to handle this for you is you're just no. gonna have errors so oh yeah a lot of these are getting out ahead of this one. I think is, this is a really good one to highlight ahead of time. Yeah, I totally agree. So Aaron, uh, Brian has a question on this. When we were playing with this in, in angular nine, when you, when we tested this, did you get your errors at compile time or in runtime? Well, Teva only errors. That's a good question. Be love. Brian F love. Um, I don't know, man. That's a good question. I don't know. I can't remember if they were runtime or build time. I, I got to, I mean, I know the thing doing the check-in is, um, is part of the angular compiler stuff, the NGC, but, uh, I can't remember where we got the errors. I just know it didn't work. We, we need to confirm, but I think with all of the new yeah. template type checking, I think this comes as part of that. So I think you get it earlier in the cycle rather than a runtime yeah. what's going on, but we'll, we'll follow up and tweet yeah. something out on that once we confirm it. True. Okay. Good question, Brian. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. Next section. So we're on to, oh yeah. Component directive um, inheritance. So we called it component inheritance, but really it's the directive inheritance because component inherits from directive. Component is basically a directive with a template, right? Like if you're like, Hey, what's the difference between act component and act directive? Hmm. They got the same things, except for one of them has a template, right? And the other one doesn't. The other one's just a directive on an on an already existing thing that has its own template. So it's really it's really for directive, which affects template as well. But in the past, if you have a component and you're like, hey, my component extends another component, okay? And, and if the parent component has this host decoration right here. So it, it, the parent component has the, 
some key value binding in the host, the host property of the component or the directive. In the past, in Angular 9 or below or 8, eight or below, the child component that was extending the parent component did not inherit this. Okay. So let's say right here, instead of key string, let's say I've said class.foo and the value I said true. Okay. So let's say I have a component that's going to have class.foo is equal to true. In the past, if I extended that component, the child, the, 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 the components that are extending it didn't also inherit that host binding. But now in Angular 9, you are going to inherit that host binding. And there's not a migration away from this because it might be in, you might be, um, if they removed it or whatever, it could break. The problem is if you're not expecting the child component to inherit the host bindings, the, 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 the hosted, um, component bindings like this, it is going to start happening and it may have adverse effects. If you're binding to values or to class values or stuff like that, it is going to be something that will have adverse effects. And it is something why I'm talking about it now. It is something you can look for, you can spelunk through the code, and you can fix today, right? So th this is why we're bringing it up. Kim, how likely do you think this is going to be? I don't know. So I don't do this. Granted, I'll caveat anything I'm going to say with the fact that I uh, work for an identity company, so I don't actually write production-level Angular applications. I mostly do samples. And... Um, this, I can say from my perspective, this won't affect me, uh, but that's not to say that, so I would love to hear from somebody who has experience building sort of more robust production level applications to find out if this is something that's a concern. So there's a, a couple of questions in the in okay. follow up on this that have been out there. Like, um, what do you mean by sending a component parent? Okay, so can I, should I, should I just mock this up real quick? Yeah, and then Let's there was one other it. question earlier. If you can bump your font size a titch, it might help some. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. Good, good call. Okay, so here's – I bumped the font size on the PDF. Let's go ahead and we'll – I'll share my screen and we'll bump my font size in the editor. So um, so here we go in our stack blitz. So let's say on my app components, I have um, – I do this host binding – and I say, I want you to bind to class.foo, right? And I want you to be true. So this is going to put uh, the class foo onto my element. And if I come over here and inspect this, this uh, root component, um, it now has class foo on it because I did this host binding. True. And now if I say um, at component... Sorry, I'm just going to copy the whole thing. Sorry, I'm going to be lazy. And if I make another component, and this is app2, and it's app2 component, and it extends app component. Um, I can spell, right? So at this point, if I take away this, this binding, one second, I got to, I got to, in order to kind of finish this whole mock-up, I've got to come over and add this to my app module. So one second. App two component. And we got to bring that into the declarations. App two component. Okay. So now if I go to, um, if I go into app component, I can add, wait, did I change the selector on app two component? Yeah, my app too. So I go into here and I say my app to um did I get recursion? Is that what just happened, yo? Something, yeah, you got a max call stack, it looks like. Come on, bud. Maybe I'll just uh here, let's just do this. So let's come over to uh the app module and instead of bootstrapping app component will just app bootstrap app component too. still erroring what are you talking about bro um yo am i crazy why is it not loading did i not export it 
Yeah, where's your? Did you keep the name the same of the class? No, it's 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 app component too. So. All right, so this live demo is not working. Owen and I mocked this up like professionals. We would not have, um, right? We wouldn't have not mocked this up. We did this ahead of time. It's just not working for the demo. Oh, wait, so wait, 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 I know. The comments are saying it's the same template URL. Yeah, so I just need to do this. Yeah, we're good now. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. I just needed to go into index HTML, and we're good. Okay, so now we're good. Um, in Angular 8, uh, if I look now at, if I inspect this, this element, it does not have the foo on it. Okay. So over here where I have it, um, it's extending it. This, this child component is extending the parent component and the parent component has this host binding in Angular 8. The, the component is not like, it's not, a, it's not inheriting this host binding as well. But in Angular 9, it is going to inherit that host binding. So starting in Angular 9, now, even though I don't have a host binding on this app2 component, it because I'm extending a component that does have it, I will inherit those as well. And, and that's so that's a new thing. And it's not going to break your app as far as like, oh, you're getting console errors. It's it is going to have a potentially adverse effects, like if, if extra if extra things got um if extra uh classes now appear on things like obviously your app's now going to look different or maybe you have some different bindings going on in there with styles or other or, or other values so those are kind of the things you need to check out um that you need to look for so if you're if you're in an app most apps i don't think i don't think most of us extend components i think we we kind of compose components we don't inherit component functionality we we extend it and so i don't uh I don't think that we we have a lot of people that will be affected by this, but if you do it, it's like a lot of people will have like um, base component or whatever. So if you have base component today and you you extend it all over your app and your base component has host bindings, you're now going to bleed that into every component of your app. So this is something you're going to need to account for before you upgrade to Angular 9, which is why we're calling it out today because it is a thing you can do before Angular 9 this year. So... Um, Someone says, is this is this similar to if we use the host binding? This is the very similar to using the host binding. Um, like super, super similar. Host binding, I don't like there's no notes about the host binding. Like if you extend something with a host binding, it doesn't say that, that that's gonna happen. I would imagine that it does, but I'm not sure. So so yeah. I know we've got uh Steven uh Fluen on here, or at least he was earlier. He gave us a good answer on the uh the previous question about when that uh, template error would happen, which was at build time. Maybe if he uh, gets a chance to chime in on whether or not the host binding and, and host is the same, we yeah. can get it straight from the source. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We'll see. Maybe he'll answer. All right. So that's that one. This is, I mean, uh, so some of these are going to have minor to major effects in your app and they're not anything that a schematic could catch. So this is something you can do now to start getting ready for nine. So that's that's kind of what that is. All right. So let's move on to the next. Wait, wait, Kim, thoughts on this? Um, I agree with uh, what Tanya had said earlier. I'm trying to find where where I just feel like extending components sounds like it's asking for trouble. Yeah. Um, this isn't something that I do or have any urge to do. Um, so I, while I do use the host binding decorator, it's it's not something that I've run into because I don't try to extend components. I don't. Uh, I think in some of the comments, a lot of people said they don't do this, but at least one person said they do. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I guess I'm I'm kind of interested in in like the use case for extending them. So um, everyone's buddy Mike Ryan gave a talk in London about having like a, a reactive component and extending that. But as far as other use cases, I'm like you, I don't understand. Like Ryan, Mike Ryan convinced me I want to extend components, but other than Mike, I don't, I don't have a reason why I would do this. So I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you as well. So, Owen oh, thoughts. 
Yeah, no, I, we had a good comment. Um, I missed who put all oh, Christian uh, going back to the gang of four quote favor composition over inheritance. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm of the same school of thought there to yeah. try to avoid that. Brad, can. Brad says he does it for like dialogues because it, and this does actually make a lot of sense. Dialogues can get really complicated. So having a base dialogue, so that your other dialogues don't have to be so muddy. That's actually a really good, good idea. So yeah, that's a super good use case example. Yeah, that's a really good use case. I'm glad, Brad, I'm glad you spoke up, um, Brad. That was great. Um, okay, so yeah. All right, so let's keep going. Let's move on to the next piece, which is the content, content, ch content, child, content, children. So scroll ski. All right. So this content, content, children, um, if you, so where this comes into play is if you have a component that uses content projection, right? And the way you know you use content projection is because in your template, you have something like this. You have um, ng content. And if you have that, in your in your template anywhere then you're using content projection and um and sometimes and content projection means when someone consumes your component they can pass things down into it like they could be like um you know maybe they put inside of your component they put uh they put an image tag right or whatever they want to do and um, sometimes you may want to query for, for those dynamic things that will be rendered inside of your component. You may want to query for those. Or like it, you may want to select those out of the DOM and do some things with those, with those children that, that exist inside of your component, but they weren't there. They're not part of your template because that's what like the, the content projection is for. And so if you want to query the dynamic children that are inside of you, that's what content um, child and content children are, they're a way to query the DOM for a type of element that might be inside of you. Um, now, previously, content child and content children, if you were selecting those, you could also select yourself. So if you were like, hey, if there's any more of me inside of me, query that. And um, and and if you were if you were selecting yourself in those queries going forward, you are no longer going to be selecting yourself in that query. So that might be fine with you. You might be like, cool. I didn't like that anyway. I, I added extra code to filter myself out. But if you're someone who wasn't taking that into account, then when these change, that may have adverse effects in your code. So um, anyone who's using at content child or at content children, it's it's to now before Angular around this year is a good time to go through your code and say, oh, the thing that I'm selecting, the query that I'm writing, am I querying for more of myself? So, so let me show you what I mean by querying for more of yourself. So inside my app, sorry, let me get rid of that. If I, if I say, hey, at content children, and um, I'm querying for more app to components, right? I want to see if anyone else use the... Uh, the app to component inside my thing, right? So that's what that's kind of what this query would do. It would query for any more app to components inside of me. So if someone used one of me inside of me, that's what this query would return. But before, that would also return my instance of the component, not just children instances. But going forward, it will only return children instances that are used inside of you, not including yourself. So if you if you if you go through your app and you look for content children. And the class that's being queried is the same class that you're in. You're going to have adverse effects when you release this out there. That's going to be your app will start to error. So, um, so yeah. Questions on that, or what do you? I, I'm not sure. I don't really know how to gauge how many people this is going to affect. What do you think about that, Owen? Um, it's, this is one of those ones where it, it's. For me, like the only action that I could really say to going forward is to just look for your usages of that and think about what your impacts are going to be. I think for a lot of people that use it, this may not even be uh, a problem. They'll be able to move yeah. forward without any issues, which is why it was in the section like less common yeah. impacts. But if you're using that heavily, um, 
yeah. you for sure take a look at how, at how you're using it today to make sure you don't have unexpected behavior. Yeah. Um, I totally agree. Is there any comments about this in the, in the, in the, stuff? I haven't seen anything. We've, we've had a good discussion still going about, uh, that inheritance versus composition and oh, yeah. uh, benefits of, of the two that it's actually been, there's a lot of great uh, knowledge sharing going on in the live comments. Uh, we got to do another one of these so I can just learn more from the people S attending. It's awesome. Seriously. Tanya's on point. I'm going to go out on Twitter and follow Tanya. She's, she's like directing this conversation in a really good way. So, all right, that's happening after this. Okay. So the last thing we're going to talk about is, um, the new, the strict flag when you create a new project. So this one, I didn't really see this in any of the notes, uh, the release notes. I saw it in, um, I saw it in, in the change log, but I didn't see it in any of the release notes. But going forward, when you create a new project, if you, you know, as you're typing, you know, ng new, um, you know, my cool project to make a new project starting in Angular 9, you could say strict, you can pass this strict flag. It didn't used to exist. It does now. And what this strict flag will do is it adds a bunch of new TypeScript um, options into your, into your TS config. It didn't used to be there. If any of you check your apps today that you generated with the CLI, these aren't in there. Okay. These options right here, they're, they're not there, but, um, I've added these options in my projects and every single one of these options reduces the number of tests I have to write like significantly. And I've seen some people commenting, man, the typing system really throws me for a loop with these type systems it, specifically right here have prevented so many bugs for me that I, I use these in all my projects. And I, I, and I, and then when I first, when I was there forced on me, I was like, uh, just let me use any Owen. Why you hate me? Don't make me define my return. Like, don't let me just imply the return. No, don't make me say the return. I want to reply my intern. Like no implicit this get out of here. Like I, I was really bothered at these rules when they were first forced upon me. But then I started using, it. I was like, wait, if I hadn't used this, Tomorrow, when someone does this, they could have created a bug not knowing. Like this could have been a big, really big problem. And so, um, this is a thing that we we only put in because it's actually missing from the release notes. But you can start adding this into your app today and get some of the benefits that these new this new strict dash dash strict flag can have for new apps. And in the in the release docs, we've included links to blogs that that, that or to the documentation that explain, hey, this is why this is a good thing. And there's actually a blog out there where um, um, where a company that's actually local to where I'm at called Lucid, they turned some of these on in their app and they talk about all the benefits, but it was not easy to turn them on. So these are the, these are the kind of TypeScript flags that you can't just turn on and, oh, it just worked. If you just turn it on in an app that doesn't have them, mm, you have so many TypeScript errors, your app's not going to compile. There are things you need to slowly turn on. But... Um, some people, what they do to get these on is they'll create like in like, let's say they're making a new function, a new, a new, a new section of the app. Like let's say Owen and I, we're going to build a new dashboard. Right. And, um, we're like, Hey everybody, we're going to make our own TS config for our section of the data for our section of the app, just for the dashboard. And in our section, we can start using these flags because we have our own TS config that extends the base config. And if you do something like that, then you can kind of slowly start to put these into your app without having to go back and refactor the entire application. So that was why we threw these in here. We wanted people to know, hey, this is going to be a thing that it may eventually put these in by default. It doesn't today, um, but it is an option starting in Angular 9 to get these into your app from day one. Um, but also uh, another thing is in Angular 9, you're going to get upgraded to, to 3.6 version of TypeScript. So we've included the release notes. There's, I'm not going to lie. There's some cool stuff. There's really hardcore typing details in here. So if you're really hardcore typist, go read the, the, the 3.6 release notes. The big feature in TypeScript that every, everyone's waiting for, that doesn't come till 3.7. And any there's not supporting 3.7 yet. So, um, so there's not anything that's like, oh my gosh. Like I didn't really, 
there's not there wasn't a lot going on in 3.6 that people were like tweeting about like it didn't it didn't send everyone's hearts racing but it does have a lot of really powerful stuff and performance improvements but anyway so that's kind of what these are there for um so uh thoughts on this stuff owen and kim uh, I, me, oh you go first kim i i really like this i think that any all the things was a thing that i definitely did way too much when uh, i start started using typescript and yeah just getting that under control is really good i appreciate that um, you can enable them one at a time, though, because as you've noted in the PDF, it says for strict null checks, especially this might cause problems with third party libraries that aren't compatible. Um, so I think one of the things we're going to have to sort of think about as we do this is what are the third party libraries doing um, and, and how does that affect our ability to, to turn these on or off? And I'm, yeah. what is in 3.7? I don't want to like derail so, the conversation. But. No, so it's called optional chaining. So um, you know how when you have like an if statement, Kim, and you're like, if the user has an address and the address has a city, then I'm going to print the city or I'm going to do something in my code. So like yep. I have to do that check of if user and user address and user address dot city. Yep. Well, going forward, you can say, if user question mark dot address question mark dot city. Uh, okay. I, I, I think I did know that actually. Yes. Yeah, so that's called optional yeah. chaining. That's the feature that everyone's like, give to me yep. today. Yes. <laughs> Add to my code now. And so, yeah. And other languages have it, right? Like this is, this is only new to Java and it's not even new to JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript won't get this for a while, but it is, it will be new to TypeScript and it's pretty exciting, but other languages are like, yes, I have this. I have this already and, and, and I miss it in TypeScript. So TypeScript, once again, continues to help, um, you know, knock down barriers for getting new features into JavaScript. So it's really, really powerful. Right. But again, just to be clear, um, it it's going to have 3.6, not 3.7. Yeah, again, not three. That, that what we just said is not in Angular 9. That will be maybe in 9.1 or whatever, but it's not in Angular 9. So yeah, good question. Good, good. I'm glad you called that out. So, uh, so yeah, any, any other, so we're, we're kind of done. Are there any other kind of thoughts from anybody or questions going forward? Any, like any, any, any notes going on in the, uh, in the, the comments? Uh, so I've kept track of a lot of the things that, um, just for people that have stuck around through us, thanks for that. Um, you know, whether it's Ivy um material there were some questions about you know what's the impact on ionic um and and a lot of things that we're planning on for the next um uh, live broadcast that we're going to do yeah um, so i would say make sure you sign up for that and and if you have anything else for sure send it to us on twitter beforehand and work because we'll have the the experts on on with us uh to talk through that so um yeah um you call that out one more time who yeah, when so, it is, who's going to be there yeah so uh we've got another event coming up people are like tell me the date i'm adding it today the angular 9 release event well the, the problem is is nobody knows when angular 9 is going to be out right like uh if you would have asked me six months ago i would have said it would be out in october um i think the angular team would have guessed probably something similar they're just trying to make sure all the you know everything's tightened down and and, and working for us before they release it um, every day there's new commits going in and fixing stuff. So, um, so yeah. Um, so we're going to have a release event with them though. Once it's, once it's live about 24 hours after it's live, we're going to have a live event with the angular team with some prominent people from the community like Victor Savkin. We've reached out to Sonic Yusuf. Hopefully we can get some, some really good people there so that we can kind of go through, Hey, what does this mean for everybody? How do I update? What are, what do I do if I run into problems and what are some of the things I need to start changing my app today? So we're going to have a live event that has a different focus on, um, than what we did today. Today is what can I do before Ivy or before Angular 9? The next event is how do I update? How do I, what do I need to do now? Like that's what the next event is. And so if you want to head over and be a part of that event, head over to our, 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 our landing page for that ngcnf.org slash um ng9 that's the that's the event where you can subscribe to kind of get notified of when that live event will happen um 
if you could, we I, we invite you all to share that on Twitter just because um, getting that shared out makes these events worth it for us. It makes it worth it for the Angular team to get more exposure, to kind of share this message as far and as wide as we can. Again, this is a big, big, meaningful event, Angular 9 uh, being out. The Angular team, this is potentially one of the most significant releases the team's ever had. So it is a, a very big deal to ship this out. So, um, so yeah, you'll want to be a part of that. And, and, and being a part of it will help you be the, the angular hero, the angular nine hero on your team where a lot of people are like, Hey, now, now what do we do? Like, and, and if you're here, you're, you're staying part of these events, you can kind of be the guide of your, the Sherpa, the angular nine Sherpa that gets your team, you know, over that mountain. So, so yeah. Um, any other questions or thoughts? Someone's saying, what about static site rendering um, or server side rendering? Sorry. Uh, there's not a lot of any universal changes in nine that I know of. Um, choose static faults. Uh, I'm just trying to read. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I would encourage everyone to just make a branch in their current projects to try out the Angular 9 update. Just go and go to the next.angular.io and try the update. So here, let me let me let me share my screen again and kind of sh share with people. By the way, my kids having a meltdown in the background, so I apologize with everybody. Um, so yeah, here let's go over to next.angular.io and you can come to the updating to version nine. Walk through these steps. First, you want to update to the latest version of eight. So if you're on seven, you're gonna to need to get on eight first. That's that's actually one call out we didn't call out, Owen. That's true. Is there is no seven to nine. There's seven to eight and eight to nine. So you need to get on eight first. So that's that's another thing you can do today is get on eight. Um, but you're gonna to want to install the latest eight to get all the latest schematics and everything for the update. Then you're gonna to want to um uh if that had any changes like if there's any schematics that ran uh commit those uh but then you're going to want to just run this update now when you run that update they've actually there's a lot of really cool feedback that heads out in your console like it's like hey i'm running this migration now i'm running this migration so you actually get a lot of feedback you're like oh cool oh and it's like i was like wow they're doing all this for me they're checking my project for all these scenarios like it's actually a really powerful update they've they've done a lot to not break your app. It's really impressive. Like kudos to the Angular team and to the community that helped them get these schematics going. Um, but try it out and then just run your app and see what breaks. Um, I promise it's better to do this before it releases because if you have a major break because of it and you tell the Angular team before their general release, they're going to pay attention to you. If you tell them after the release, I don't know. And they're going to be on, they're going to be moved on to like Angular 9.1 at that point. So I would definitely suggest trying it out before, um, before it goes general release 9.0, because then you're going to have their ear because they're hard, they're hardcore listening to the issues coming in right now. So now is a really good time to try it out and get their, get their help. If you run into any issues that, that, and that's, that's just my suggestion. I think the Angular team would agree now is a good time to try it out and get their attention on, on some of these issues. So, so yeah, but uh, yeah. So anyone, please join us for our next event, head over to our landing page, jump on that list. We'll email you again. No one knows when it's going to happen because we don't know when Angular nine is going to happen. We can, we can suppose Angular nine will be released on a Wednesday, which means this event will happen on one of the upcoming Thursdays. But other than that, we don't really know. So, so yeah. And I will uh, just say for, for some of the questions that are being asked, I think these are great questions for the Angular team at that other event. Uh, like what's next for Angular after Ivy? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was, oh, the chat's moving kind of fast. Sorry. Yeah. Um, what happens uh, with like reactive, reactive forms? forms. Yeah. 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 A lot of it's questions like, for um, on Angular 9 stuff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I agree. So, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what's going on. Um, Again, for those who who aren't following Kim on Twitter, go follow Kim Maida. She's a great source of like to learn both about soft skills in life, but also about programming. Uh, follow Owen 
he also he's he's kind of in the know and helps follow uh get people out there so and again thanks for coming and uh what's we will your, what's, catch your, what's your twitter account oh my twitter is aaron frost i don't have a banner for it i apologize if anyone wants to follow me uh at aaron frost on twitter i'll spell it right though let me spell it right hold on spelling correctly is my jam there we go okay follow me on twitter and uh again that uh, through owen and i that's where a lot of these next events are going to be coming to you so but but yeah please and then anyone i mean this is my last plug these are put on through the main sponsor i mean this is put on through ngconf if anyone wants to be at the very the world's first angular conference where ivy is actually live where there will be more teaching about new things in angular than ever before like you're not going to want to miss ng comp 2020 um and you ng comp the musical it's going to be a really really action-packed fun learning event for everyone where there's going to be more new stuff for angular than there there has been in the last few years so definitely head over to ng-conf.org and um think about getting a ticket start ha start having those conversations with your boss today because it's going to be a big event so anyway and, and also um when does the cfp close Oh yeah. So if you're listening and you want to submit a call for paper, it's still open. It closes on January 3rd. We want everyone to have the, the, uh, the, the vacation season in December to think it through and to get their submissions in. So it closes on January 3rd at midnight. And then Kim, you're actually flying out to Utah a few days later to help us go through those talks and pick them out. Right. I am. Yes. Yeah. This is your first time doing that. It is. And heard the stories about how intense that process is it's gonna be fun we're excited you're coming so yeah um the cfp still open uh we actually just opened our diversity scholarship program as well so if you're not following us on twitter or on our email list you're gonna want to go get on that we have diversity scholarships um we've got um we've got a lot going on in in, in ngconf right now so so head over and follow us and jump on our email uh subscriber list because there's a lot going on so so yeah Anyway, I will. We're we're about ten minutes over, so I'll be respectful of people's times and say thanks for coming. And please uh, catch us on our next event. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.